Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the afternoon program here at the AM4U stage at our third day of Form Next 2022. We talked a lot again at this Form Next about market access, innovations, demands for applications in the industry, but also about skill shortages and education. What we certainly need is kind of an overview, an introduction to the topic, but in a way that addresses a target group as large as possible. And the good thing is we have something like that, and the following speaker will introduce you to the whole topic. The AM Field Guide is one of my most important publications and provides an excellent introduction and overview of additive manufacturing and its processes. Join me on stage welcoming Professor Dr. Stefan Ritter from Reutlingen University, who will tell us all about this fantastic publication. Stefan, it's so good to have you back again. Thank I leave the stage to you. Thank you very much uh, for this very kind introduction, AM Field Guide. Um, I need to tell you a story. Some years ago, uh, the Formnix team, and this was actually the time when the trade show was still kind of not so professional like it looks today. And that team came to me and said, hey, uh, do you have an idea which can contribute to, to the field of AM? Uh, um, could, could we do something? And I said, hey, I, I have an initial idea. I, I, sometimes I have no clue what we're talking about. The machines all look the same. <laughs> Sorry for some of the uh, uh, machine manufacturers here, but hey, these are boxes actually mainly. Yeah, they have a build room for for the AM build process. Then they have a control unit, and 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 uh, actually, it, it's very important to to think about the the method, the building method behind it, and to understand it. There is not this one uh, and only additive manufacturing or, or 3D printing system. There are lots and tons of different variants and, 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 and uh, um, systems, and that need to be understood. So we, uh, um, I, I developed those very, very, and I would say reduced to the max graphics, and this is what I would like to introduce to you, and this is actually at the very end what you uh, have also in your hand to give you an, an, a basic introduction into the thrilling field. And, and I, I hope you, you, you join and, and, and you, you, you feel the same way that this is a super interesting field we are entering here at this, this trade show at the Forum Next. So um, let's step back some years ago. And actually, it's, it's many 10 years ago when the real three D printing hype began. I'm doing 3D printing since the early 90s. So it, it, uh, from, from the very early days on, it was called rapid prototyping at that time. Um, and, and of course, we used 3D printing, 3D Druck, something like that. Um, but, but then for a very long time, it was kind of a very yeah, professional thing, mainly for product development. And in the years 2012, it, it really started booming. Why? Um, because some patents ran out, yeah? And so the maker scene discovered this, and this, this brought an immense push into the whole system. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, and, and <laughs> there, there are always pros and cons about this, with a lot of <laughs> to, to, with too much expectation in that, yeah? Look at those, those headlines, the future of medicine, the new industrial revolution. Um, so so uh, looking at this, there was too much, uh, uh, yeah, over expectation. And Gartner hype, uh, the Gartner hype cycle, Gartner is uh, um, a consulting agency uh, from the US and um, they are uh, looking at new technologies and actually there is always this innovation trigger in the very early beginning. There is this peak of inflated expectation 
uh, then there is the, the valley of disillusionment, yeah, uh, which, which this technology run through, and then hopefully the slope of enlightenment. Yeah? And it works a little bit like this. Yeah? And some of these, these things we, we, which uh, popped up in 3D printing yeah, uh, never made uh, the, its way back uh, uh, all the way to, to the, the peak of uh, productivity. And others, like in dental industry, hundreds of thousands or millions of parts are nowadays produced. Yeah? So you, you really need to understand what are we talking about. Yeah? And, and I, I will definitely warn you, just seeing parts doesn't mean that those parts are fully functional. Sometimes these are just models. Yeah? Uh, do, do they last long enough? I, I see lots of, of turbine blade things, high-tech stuff. Does it really work? Yes, some of them real work, really work, and some others just look like um, turbine blades and our good models for that. So, so be careful looking at examples. Always ask the right question. This is very important when you enter this field. Um, these are the Google search queries um, in, from the past uh, 10 years. And look at this. Uh, it proves that in the year 2012, it became a dramatic uh, um, push um, this scene, 3D printing, and since since then, obviously, it's it's uh, really uh, uh, established uh, additive manufacturing as kind of the professional expression for um, 3D printing. Um, it is way lower, so th th there is no clear uh, um, in, in in the common sense. There is no clear distinction, uh, this means this and th that means that, uh, uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing, most of the time they are used in the same manner. Looking at the fields of application, when should I ask for additive manufacturing? What's, what's the, the, uh, uh, what should trigger me with respect to, should I think about additive manufacturing or not? And I spotted six fields which are, are, are trigger fields for that, that um, um, additive manufacturing is worth thinking about it, actually. One of the most important ones, and I named it before, is prototyping. It started out as rapid prototyping, yeah? rapid with respect, actually, to uh, the old way of, of creating prototypes. So it was way faster at that time. I'm, I'm an engineer, and sometimes it's still too slow, and, and we, we always should, should speed it up. And still, a lot of applications are running in that field. So approximately 50%, it de depends really on, on, on in which field you're looking at, but 50% of 3D printing is used, 3D prints are used in the field of, of um, product development, yeah? creating prototypes, de de creating first functional prototypes in a very fast way, uh, creating prototypes. Here, an example of medical application, so, so medical instruments, are, are, are really made for the surgeon, for the surgeon hand, and so uh, they are printed in, in, in uh, non-steel here, in, in plastic. Yeah? They can handle, do handling tests, and then they say, okay, yeah, it's, it's okay, and, and then it's, it's produced in a, in a stainless steel way or something like that. Yeah? Then actually one of the more fascinating things is, and, and you see some of those uh, printing uh, methods have the ability to print in real color. On the right side, uh, uh, this model is absolutely stunning, and there is no other method you can create something like that. Yeah? On the left side, so this is for educational purposes, for example. Yeah? On the left side, you see a blood vessel system, and uh, this is a project which was done in uh, Chicago. Um, and uh, coming out of uh, um, computer tomography uh, data, uh, the, the surgeons 
can, can create something like that. And so they can make their discussions about how do we do the surgery and so on. They can do it with a real model in their hand and try to, to, to optimize, uh, uh, let's say, minimal invasive uh, uh, um, yeah, techniques or something like that. Uh, model making as a special part of, let's say, prototyping, okay? Hey, then of course, the small batch production. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, yeah, looking at some of the applications here on the trade show, hey, small batches run from, from two to, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000. These are still kind of small batches. If the parts are small, this, this can be super, super, super efficient uh, 3D printing. And hey, nowadays it's, it's, you can do calculations. You can ask the right partners, give me an offer. I need uh, uh, 200 parts in, in very big early beginning of my production. Uh, uh, how much does it cost? You can compare it with other methods. This is state of the art and very well known so far. Yeah. Number four, if it, the number, the quantity goes down to a single part, we are talking about individualization. And here, for ex uh, it, 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 as an example, it is absolutely fascinating what can be done. And uh, before I said, hey, 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 uh, uh, please uh, uh, don't, don't have any over expectations. In dental industry, for example, it was kind of a revolution and it changed a lot, yeah? Because here we are talking about customization, yeah? Each of us has different teeth, of course, yeah? And th so for, for teeth correction uh, methods, this is used in an absolute standard way nowadays. So, so everything which need to uh, build in an individual way, this is perfect and, and hundreds of thousands of parts are produced and millions of parts are produced each and every year um, referring to that field of application. Um, the, the nicest part of it, and I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm always fascinating about getting new possibilities of product creation into my hands. Yeah. Who can drill a hole around a corner? Nobody. Yeah, don't, that's, not, that, that's not right. Yeah. Oil exploration, they can drill uh, in large scales, they can drill holes around corners. But not in, in, in our major industries here for the, for when we're talking about smaller parts. So how are those channels for cooling applications, for example, are created yeah? with additive manufacturing? Yeah? And, and uh, freedom of design means we can create geometries which are impossible to be created with any other technology, with any other techniques known so far. And this is really, really interesting. You see on, on, the, on the lower side, the blue uh, part, this is a metal, uh, 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 um, uh, on, on, on the top side, these are two metal applications. On the lower uh, uh, one, this is a lightweight construction, bionical design principles, which means of biomimicry, how it's called in English, and, and uh, super lightweight, uh, construction, which can't be produced with any other uh, method in an in a economical way. Last but not least, as a field of application, I called it the in-situ manufacturing. I want a production machine here and now. I'm here on a very remote place, here the stage, so far away from any other uh, production site. So, um, this is what, what, what the intention is. Uh, uh, as, as the example, this is the space station and they need to be pre prepared uh, for, for different uh, health issues, but they can't take all the equipment with them. And so the NASA really worked out a program where they print out those uh, 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 things they need for these uh, cases here. Um, 
you, you, you see, see instruments, uh, medical instruments, and they are printed out. The base of it is, is, is a special um, filament uh, which, is, uh, um, which kills bacteria, uh, but these are some specialties and, and it's easy to understand. Yeah? But uh, we, we don't need to, to uh, uh, travel into space. Uh, if we are developing uh, something top, top, top secret, which should not uh, uh, um, be, be leaked somehow out, yeah? and I have a um, um, development department uh, behind closed doors, sometimes it's also the same case that this uh, we need in C2 manufacturing site over there, just right away. And most of the time, the most interesting applications are mixtures of those low quantities. I would like to have it in a fast way, uh, prototyping. So mixtures of of these um, create even more and and make more sense to apply additive manufacturing. So if one of those six cases and application fields make a click into your head, then you should think about additive manufacturing. There is not this one and only additive manufacturing method. Yeah? And it, it is confusing. I said it in the, in the very early beginning because the machines seem to look like the same. They have housings, they have these control units, and you need to understand, hey, what's behind it? And as an example, here we see the plastic, the main plastic um, um, methods, manufacturing methods. There are way more, but they are, uh, let's say, these, these are the most common one. According to Pareto, this is the 80-20. Here we are covering more than 99% of the, of the market. Yeah. Um, some of those are powder bait, um, uh, uh, based, yeah. so the material uh, it is, is put into the, the machine as a powder. Some others, it's a solid material, and we either uh, uh, have filament, which is a string, uh, uh, or uh, granulate, which are small, more small grains, yeah? or it is liquid. Yeah, the 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 right, the three right um, applications and 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 uh, uh, methods are based on liquid plastic. Um, some of them are are able to print in color, like you see here, the multi chat fusion on the left side, or the material chatting. Um, on uh, the more right side over there. Um, you saw the example before, uh, this, this uh, semi-transparent uh, figurine of a, of a human body. This is uh, produced with such a, a material chatting um, a, a, a machine, actually, process. Yeah? So, and, and you need to decide Hey, what do I what do I need? What properties do do I want to uh, uh, have in in my product in the in, at the very end? Yeah, is it a metal part or could it be also okay if I'm printing a a plastic part? Because hey, the properties are completely different, and and hey, metal melts at 1,200 degrees, something like this, uh, depending on on the metal. Plastic melts at start melting at 220 degrees, so there is a big, big difference. And this is also the price difference in the machines. Yeah? Uh, it, it is way more complex to create metal machines. Uh, I don't say it's easy to create get good, good, good plastic machines, don't misunderstand me, but, but uh, the, 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 um, yeah, the specification with respect to temperature um, and we, with respect to, to all the, the, the thing which need to be taken into account is way higher, and that's the reason why uh, metal printing is, in general, more expensive than plastic printing. And here you see on the left side these, these uh, five uh, printing methods. Uh, they can 
create in a direct way metal parts. So at the end, you have a metal part in your hand, whereas those uh, on, the, on the right side, the three on the right side, they create a so-called green part. So this is not a metal part, a finished metal part. This is a, um, a process in between. And this green part needs to be sintered in the, in, the, uh, in the next step. And then after the sintering process, we have our metal part in our hand. And last but not least, and I'm, 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 I just can give you this basic introduction, you need to refer to the field guide to discover those techniques by yourself. Yeah? And um, in, in last but not least, these are what we call the other materials, because metal and uh, plastic play the most important role. That does not mean that the ceramics are, are uh, um, not, and, and, and the other printers are uh, uh, some th something second class or <laughs> something like that. Yeah? Uh, here we have stunning uh, uh, applications. Uh, you heard uh, probably about printing houses. I mean, this is nothing more than this, this paste extrusion modeling. Yeah? Uh, you have a pasty um, um, structure, and you print it out X, Y, Z, and then you create uh, objects. Yeah? It's uh, n no matter if it's icing, if it's a chocolate printer, if it's food printers, most of them are just the principle is paste extrusion modeling, house printers, and so on. So, so a lot of printers and pr printing uh, methods uh, are, are covered by the paste extrusion, by the process of paste extrusion modeling. Yeah? Um, also, uh, binder chatting with sand and gypsum are used to print cores for the casting industry, for example. Very, very successful, very accurate. Nowadays, it's absolutely state-of-the-art production technique. Um, understanding additive manufacturing means that there is not this single 3D printing process uh, or, or, or this 3D printing machine. And you, you, you throw some, some data in and the object comes out. It's a process. And we have to understand that pre-processing, the, the main AM production phase and post-processing are also very important phases which we need to know. And, and uh, sometimes they are way more complex than the process itself, the 3D printing process itself. And the, the, the mystery uh, uh, about uh, uh, controlling this process lays more in the, in the uh, post-processing process than actually in the, in the initial uh, 3D printing process. Let's look at, at uh, what, what those processes mean. Pre-processing means actually we should design products for 3D printing. Um, engineers are, are taught to think the other way around. Most of the time we have bulk material and we grind something out. So it's, it's subtractive thinking. Additive thinking is the other way up. Yeah? So we definitely need to think about this when we design products. And there is a lot to learn, still a lot to learn, especially when we, when we want to discover and get out uh, the, these, these thr thrilling um, app, uh, um, uh, fields of, 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 of new uh, um, things which can only be manufactured with the additive manufacturing processes. Then data are created. They need to be transferred to the systems. Then there is in the main phase the so-called slicing, yeah? uh, bringing, bringing uh, or, or transferring the model into those slices. And then this data goes to the printer, and the printer starts building our models up. And then. And, and this is also a trend we see at the moment now here. We need to take it out. And the indus industrialization of these processes have already started now. So mainly the, 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 the machines from in the past years, years were mainly based on manual processes, taking it out. Yeah? 
and this will be transferred now into, into automated processes, uh, especially when we're talking about larger scales. And then, in the final stage, uh, the post-processing can be super important for the quality of our parts. So after post-processing, and I will, I will have some words on that, and, and the quality assurance, then at the very end, we end up having our 3D printed part in a good quality. Yeah? Um, post-processing can, can be, uh, depending on the method, can be quite, quite uh, uh, different. And some of the parts need to be heat treated because internal tensions need to warp our parts uh, or tend to warp our parts. Yeah? Um, then we have to remove support material. No material can float in the air. Yeah? Sometimes we need to build up support to, to, to uh, create our structure, so we need to get rid of this support. Then, of course, cleaning processes need to be applied on almost each and every of these methods we apply. We need to clean the parts. Sometimes we, we, we have even, even tougher cleaning methods like sandblasting to get the, the, the uh, um, yeah, material, loose material on the surface away. UV curing is applied on our VAT-based polymer uh, methods, for example. Then, of course, we, we, it's, it's also very uh, uh, obvious that the parts sometimes are not finished and they need to be machined afterwards. Yeah? Um, when we're talking about sintering processes, yeah, the part needs to be sintered. And this sinter process is a, is a, a very important process uh, to keep the dimensions under control because here we have to face with a, with a shrinkage of 20%. So the prediction of this uh, is very important to get dimension-wise good parts out of this process. Some of the parts need to be infiltrated with, with uh, uh, um, yeah, resins to make them leak-proof. And finally, sometimes also in plastic industry, parts are dyed in different colors to, to appear in, in, in wonderful uh, colors. So a lot of, of post-processes sometimes need to be applied on our products. And if we are looking at a table, plastic and, and metal, you see that, uh, th that there are uh, lots of, of different um, um, uh, ticks here in these tick boxes, yeah, which are absolutely necessary uh, to be applied on individual, um, individual uh, processes. So uh, always think about it. it. It's not just the printer itself. It's the whole environment. Um, it's, it's the machinery uh, up front and the machinery uh, also you need uh, to, to apply those post processes to get proper 3D printed parts at the very end. Um, coming back to, to some trends of 3D printing, where does it go? Um, and um, in, in the very early beginning, um, we, we had this model that 3D printers wanted to sell also the materials, um, like the, the, the coffee machine, coffee capsule, uh, uh, business model or so, and the, we, we are on our way to break that up. Uh, uh, lots of, of big material suppliers are on their way to supply materials for the additive manufacturing processes, and um, the machine manufacturers open their closed black boxes yeah, to be able to um, address this problem and to be able to adjust uh, machine settings for these individual materials. This is a huge trend and it will go on and those machines tend to be more and more open um, not to use uh, uh, this, this material which is uh, proprietary uh, just from the, from the original uh, equipment manufacturer. 
Of course, there is a big, big um, trend with respect to quality. Machines are getting more precise. Uh, machines are getting better. Um, and and th this is always kind of a, a, a huge trend over the past years. And hey, from year to year, it is stunning how much development is done uh, in this field. Um, uh, then the process as a whole is also taken into account. So far, it was mainly a manual process. Yeah, parts were taken into the printer, loaded there, then then then. Um, taken out of the, the build uh, platform or taken from the build platform. Next step, next step, next step, manual work, manufacturing work, manual manufacturing work. And uh, here uh, there is a huge trend towards automate, automation uh, when we are talking about higher quantity processes. No, no question about that. This. Then speed. Manufacturers try to speed their machines up. Yeah? We're not using one laser. We are not using uh, two lasers. No four lasers are kind of standard so far. Yeah? Uh, um, when we're talking about um, laser um, sintering, for example, um, um, the, the speeds, nozzles are, are developed for, for higher speeds. Um, so a, a lot of uh, effort is, is, is brought into that field that the, the uh, print time um, can uh, be lowered. And, and hey, on one side, we want to print in very fine details. And on the other side, we want it right now actually in our hand. Yeah? And, and uh, this is, uh, of course, conflicting targets. And uh, manufacturing, manufacturers and, and, and uh, the whole industry works on those processes to make it even, even faster. And last but not least, hey, each and every form next you see new uh, application methods, which, which I haven't introduced to you uh, today, but uh, which is, uh, of course, um, quite obvious glass printing, super exotic materials. Uh, but but uh, you see constant development with new metals, new ma uh, materials, which can be printed with also other methods, uh, uh, which I haven't introduced so far. So let me finish this talk um, and, and, and actually put a, put a, a, a big recommendation Take those field guides with you. Study those field guides. Yeah, it is reduced to the max. Um, this field guide is available, of course, here. Uh, we have it in a French, um, French, uh, Itali uh, uh, French, <laughs> English version, um, and uh, a Finnish. German version uh, at the trade show here, and the, all the other versions can be downloaded on the Fornext uh, website for educational purposes. It's always free to so use them, uh, spread them, and have fun and success uh, on your discovery tour of the Fornext. And yeah, I just have to say thank you very much for your kind attention. Big applause for Stefan. Stefan. Thank you so much. I mean, you saved my life several times with the AM field guide. As a moderator, <laughs> I'm highly dependent on an update of this field guide every time I'm here. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from the audience here? Give you the opportunity to ask a question. If not, I do have a question, yes. Stefan. I mean, um, as I'm a regular visitor at fairs and exhibitions around additive manufacturing, I know that we have so many innovations coming up, so many new technologies. How often are you asked for updates? I, I'm asked for updates, but I, I always, uh, and, and we, uh, we do updates each and every year. We do updates. Uh, but to be honest, the basics will stay the basics. Mm -hmm. yeah? and, and we are talking about the basics. This is not uh, the latest innovation. It doesn't show the latest innovation. We show the core uh, which, which uh, describe the, the different methods. And so, so this will remain the same. Some of uh, uh, new techniques will pop up and, and, and have enough 
uh, 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 power to make it into the field guide, let's say. Yeah? And, and, and I don't say I cover the whole AM world as of today. We're covering the major uh, uh, methods as of today. Yeah? Okay. Th that need to be understood. So final statement from your side, because that would be interesting for me and definitely also for the audience. Where do you see additive manufacturing this year in 2020? Because you're absorbing it all the time. What do you think is needed to do the next step? And, I mean, this automation yeah, is, is very obvious. And what we see here at the moment, uh, uh, large parts, all of a sudden we see those printers creating super large parts, uh, net shape part, that means uh, 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 they need to be finished somehow with a, with a milling process or, of, or something. Uh, that, is, uh, that is a huge trend. And, and uh, I think, hey, it, 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 there will be constant development over the next years, no doubt about that. Yeah. Awesome. was again a pleasure to have you on stage, not only for the great presentation, but also for your work. I highly appreciate that, I can tell you, in a very personal way. So thank you for being our guest, Stefan. Big it's applause again pleasure. for Stefan. See yeah, you next thank year. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Stefan. Thank Luther. you. So the audience at the screen, the audience uh, in this hall, uh, we will do a short break with our highlights and we will be right back with a, another fantastic expert insight about potential and necessity of corporations in Europe at AMA Manufacturing. So stay tuned, see you in three and a half minutes.